As far as possible, let us kneel for a word of prayer. Loving Father, we thank you for the gift and the blessing of life. And I pray, Lord, that you would help us not to take life for granted. <clears throat> Lord, as we examine prophetic truth, we are in great need of thy Holy Spirit, that you would make the truth of your word effectual, that you would make it efficient, and that it would be quick and powerful to pierce the hearts that your people may be converted your people may be surrendered as we prepare for the second coming of Christ. So please pour out your Holy Spirit in a mighty way that as we recognize the nearness of Christ's return, we will surrender ourselves to Jesus. Lord, we intercede for the church leaders. We intercede for the government leaders of our nation. And you see the crisis that is ahead. Please. Put your words in my lips. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I invite you to turn with me to Ezekiel 33. We're turning in our Bibles to Ezekiel chapter 33, beginning in verse 1. Again, that's Ezekiel chapter 33, beginning in verse 1. Notice what God says about the sword coming up on the land. Again, notice what God says concerning the sword that is to come upon the land. God says in Ezekiel 33 and verse 1, Again the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of, of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast, and set him for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, and blow the trumpet, and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet, and taketh not warning. If the sword come, and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet, and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him, but he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet and the people be not warned if the sword come and take any person from among them he is taken away in his iniquity but his blood will i require at the watchman's hand verse 7 so thou o son of man i have set thee a watchman unto the house of israel therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. It is the duty of the watchman. It is the duty of the preacher, the pastor, to blow the trumpet when he recognizes that a sword is coming upon the land. And there is a sword that is coming upon the land. And we have been talking about for weeks, for months, the coming invasion of China and Russia that will invade America, and this will be a life-changing experience, not just for America, but for the world. And as we examine the Word of God, God's Word is so clear, and He says in 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 1, the Bible says, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. In other words, it is fully established as truth once you have two or three witnesses. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Daniel chapter 8. For those of you that have not seen our studies on Revelation 13, this may, some of this may go over your head, but you can go and watch our videos on Revelation 13. But for those of you that have been studying with us over the last six months, we've come to understand Medo-Persia is an example of America. We must understand that as we examine, Medo-Persia is a type, is an example of America. And America is a two-horned beast in Revelation 13 and verse 11. Medo-Persia is a two-horned beast in Daniel 8 and verse 20. America is a, is a nation that will institute a religious death penalty in Revelation 13, 15. 
Medo-Persia instituted a religious death penalty in the days of Daniel in Daniel chapter 6 with the lion's den. Also the third witness, America followed spiritual Babylon in Revelation 13 and Medo-Persia followed literal Babylon in succession in chronology in Bible prophecy. So that, that right there is three witnesses. Now our fourth witness, America is called the glorious land of Daniel 11 and verse 41, and Medo-Persia is called the glorious land of, Eve, of Esther chapter one. We see that Medo-Persia is referred to as the glorious kingdom. So that's four witnesses to show the similarities, the synonymous, the comparison, the type, the example of how Medo-Persia is an example of America. And whatever Medo-Persia did, America would do. So when we study Daniel 8 now, when we come over to Daniel chapter 8, we examine that in reality, we must understand Daniel 8 in light of America. Are you with me? As we study Medo-Persia in Daniel 8, we must understand we are looking at the foreshadowing of the prophetic nature of the prophesying of what would happen in America. Notice what the Bible says, Daniel 8, beginning in verse 1, Daniel chapter 8, beginning in verse 1, the Bible says, In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared unto me, even unto me Daniel, after that which appeared unto me at the first. So this is the second vision that Daniel has. Verse 2, And I saw in a vision, and it came to pass when I saw that I was at Shushan in the palace, which is in the province of Elam, and I saw in a vision, and I was by the river of Uli. So here Daniel is in vision, and as he is in vision, he is taken into the White House into the White House. In other words, why do I say into the White House? Shushan is the administrative capital of Medo-Persia. Again, Shushan is the administrative capital of Medo-Persia. And the palace represents the White House. The palace represents the White House. So Daniel is taken in vision into, if you will, Washington, D.C., into the White House of America. This is what God is revealing to us as we examine Daniel chapter 8. Remember, God gave light to the pioneers on Daniel 8 as they were giving the midnight cry. They were preaching from Daniel chapter 8. Likewise, as we begin this loud cry, God is giving light from Daniel chapter 8. That which hath been is that which shall be. In order to understand the loud cry, you must understand the midnight cry. And for those that of you have never studied the loud cry or the midnight cry, there is a book that you must read. That book is called The Great Controversy. It is essential that every Christian read the book, The Great Controversy, and it will help you understand the midnight cry so you can recognize the loud cry in these last days. Let us continue. So Daniel's in the White House, and notice what he sees as we begin in verse 3 of Daniel 8. The Bible says, Then I lifted up mine eyes, and saw, and behold, there stood before the river a ram which had two horns. We know that's Medo-Persia. And the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher came up last. I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward, so that no beast might stand before him, neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand. But he did according to his will, and he became great. And as I was considering, behold, an he-goat came from the west, on the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground and the goat had a notable horn between his eyes and he came to the ram that had two horns which i had seen standing before the river and ran unto him in the fury of his power and i saw him come close unto the ram and he was moved with choler against him and smote the ram and break his two horns and there was no power in the ram to stand before him, but he cast him down to the ground and stamped upon him. And there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. 
So here we see in Daniel chapter 8, Daniel is taken into the White House, if you will, and what does he see? He sees war. War between nations because a beast represents a nation in Bible prophecy. You find it right here in this chapter, Daniel 8, verse 20 to 22, makes that very clear. Also Daniel 7, verse 17, Daniel 7, and verse 23 and 24, a beast represents a nation in Bible prophecy. So Daniel sees war as he's standing in the White House of his day. Now, as we examine the issue of war, are there discussions about war between America, China, and Russia at this hour? Notice the headline here, the Trump administration has a war plan that they want to take down the Chinese Communist Party. It says, Trump administration has put together war plan to take down Chinese Communist Party. This is from Steve Bannon, who is the former uh, strategist for the White House. He is the former, no, he is the former strategist for the White House. It goes on to say, the Trump administration has put together an integrated war plan to first confront and then take down the Chinese Communist Party, former White House chief strategist Steve Bannon said. So in light of this situation, brothers and sisters, we are seeing that now the Trump administration has a war or they are planning, they have a war plan so that they can contend with China. This is what God is showing us as we examine these things in light of Bible prophecy. Now, as we continue to examine, what else has been happening? Notice here, another headline. It says, U.S. orders China to close Houston consulate over espionage and theft. Now, this was just released today from the New York Times. So now they have ordered to close the consulate. Well, what does the consulate do? The consulate issues visas. The consulate enables those who are foreigners to be able to become citizens. And so now they are hindering Chinese from being able to become Americans. And the Trump administration has already discussed the possibility of banning all members of the Chinese Communist Party. That's millions of people. In other words, if you are a Chinese citizen, they are considering banning all Chinese Communist Party members. This is very significant, and this is only escalating the tensions between the two nations. Well, how did China respond? Notice another headline that says they burnt the papers when they received them. It says, China burns documents as it's evicted from Houston consulate by Trump administration in dramatic escalation of tensions. And this was just released today. So showing us the situation is intensifying between the two nations. Well, what, is this, what else is happening? Notice another one. It says the feds have charged visiting Stanford researcher with lying about ties to China's military. So you had a researcher that came from China to America, and this researcher is actually a part of the Chinese military, is what the article says. But notice what else? This situation is only intensifying by the day. Notice what it says in another headline. Chinese hackers charged by Justice Department with trying to steal U.S. Corona virus research. Again, that was just released yesterday, showing you there is so much happening in this contention, in this, comp in this war between America and China. Notice, what else is transpiring in Russia? Because China and Russia are allies. We've examined that previously. Notice what it says here. Russia's readiness drill involved 150,000 troops. 400 aircraft and 100 ships. Now, imagine you have 150,000 troops, you have 400 aircraft, and you have 100 ships. You're not just, you know, just doing this for the sake of doing it. You are preparing for something. Though they say this has nothing to do with their enemies, 
they are preparing for war, brothers and sisters, and they will be invading America. We've talked about this, but we're going to see this a little bit further as we continue our study today. Now, in light of this situation, brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that God has told us these things before they happen because he wants us to believe on his word. He said, I have told you these things before it come to pass, that when it is come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. God has given us prophecy so that we can trust the word of God, so that we can trust Jesus, because only as we trust Jesus can we be clothed with his righteousness. Can we be given his character? Can we begin to have the power of the gospel and live above sin? That is the purpose of prophecy is so that you might be cleansed from sin as you confess, as you repent, and as you forsake, only by the power of Christ, the indwelling of Jesus, through conversion and being born again and changed and renewed, where you no longer operate according to the old mind, but now you live in the new man in Jesus, where now your good works, you don't take credit for them. You give all the glory to God. You recognize that as a result of this born again experience, you have been given a, the character of God. You have been given a spiritual gift that you may lead others to Jesus, that you may enlarge the kingdom of heaven. This is the purpose of the gospel experience. God wants to give you his character, number one. And God wants to give you a spiritual gift that you may enlarge the kingdom of God. And as we receive these two blessings via the Holy Spirit, now we can go forward to enlighten the earth with the glory of God. Notice what it says as we examine this video that shows that Putin has a missile plan that he desires to pour out missiles, even a plan where he's considering missiles dropping in Florida. But before I show you that video, turn with me to the book of Amos chapter three. Let's go to Amos, Amos chapter three. Now, we just saw Daniel was in the White House and what did he see? He sees war. So what is God telling us? That there is going to be an attack on the White House, that there's going to be an invasion of Washington, D.C. Many of you have seen Pastor Dana's dream, the three prophetic dreams of Pastor Dana. Some of you saw our video on that a few weeks ago. And in that, he saw Washington, D.C. on fire. And he's not the only one that have had uh, dreams of that similarity or that likeness. So there have been others that have had dreams similar in nature, considering Washington, D.C. on fire. And so in light of why we are stating that we know that we can expect an invasion, not only is it the dreams, but it also the fact of Daniel 8 is what Daniel 8 showed us. And notice this article on what we discussed from Newsweek, how right now there are 10,000 troops that are on standby in the Washington, D.C. area. Exclusive as Washington, D.C. faces coronavirus spike, secret military task force prepares to secure the Capitol. So here in this article, it tells us that there are 10,000 troops that are on standby in the Washington, D.C. area, and these troops are prepared for a foreign invasion within the D.C. area. Why would they have 10,000 troops on standby? They must know something that we do not know. They must know something about a plan. There is information that they cannot make public. They don't desire for there to be a panic. But there are 10,000 troops right now that are on standby in the D.C. area. So with that, brothers and sisters, D.C will be invaded. Notice what the Bible says, a second witness for us, Amos 3, Amos chapter 3, beginning in verse 6. Notice what the Bible says, Amos 3, beginning in verse 6, it says, shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in a city and the Lord hath not done it? Surely the Lord God will do nothing but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. The lion hath roared, who will not fear? 
the Lord God has spoken who can but prophesy. God is making it clear when there is something significant about to happen in a city, he will reveal the secret to his messengers. He will reveal the secret to his children, those who walk humbly before him, those who walk obedient in his word, but those who hold on to sin, they will be blinded and they will not see the light of prophecy. They will not see the light of Christ because they are holding on to sin. And Jesus died to save and deliver us from sin. And the longer one holds on to sin, there is a scale over the eyes. But as you begin to let go of sin and leave it alone, the scales begin to be removed from your eyes and your eyes begin to open and you begin to see things in the spiritual that you never saw before. We must be converted, brothers and sisters. Only through conversion can we have a correct understanding of the word of God. The Bible says, he that willeth to do his will shall know of the doctrine. If we truly desire to do God's will, not reading the word to do my own will, but reading the word to do God's will, we will know what truth is. Notice what the Bible says, same chapter, verse 15. Same chapter, verse 15, the Bible says, and I will smite the winter house with the summer house and the houses of ivory shall perish. Notice that the houses of ivory shall perish and the great houses shall have an end, saith the Lord. So notice God says, I will smite the summer house and the winter house. And then he says that the houses of ivory shall do what? Shall perish. Well, what color is ivory? Ivory is white, off white, right? Well, in other words, these are white, this is talking about a white house. Houses of ivory, a white house. And then it says that the great houses shall do what? Shall have an end. Well, what is the greatest house in America? It is the white house. The white house is the greatest house in America. And when we understand that there will be an end to the white house, very soon, and when I say an end, I'm talking about there is gonna be an attack on the building itself is what I'm saying. So I'm not setting any dates for any of these events that I mentioned in this message. I'm setting no dates for any of these events. Whenever they happen, God knows when they will, but I do not know. The Bible says no man knoweth the day nor the hour. The Bible also says there shall be time no longer, meaning no more prophetic time. So I do not know when these events will transpire, but we ought to be ready and prepared for the crisis. Now, I mentioned to you the summer house and the winter house from Amos 3 and verse 15. Summer house usually is in the north or in a colder region, and a winter house is in the southern region or nearer to the equator where it's warm. Why do I say that? I lived in Florida for 25 years at least 25 years. And while residing there, on, on the block that I lived, we had snowbirds. They refer to them as snowbirds, not literal birds that fly in the air, but these are individuals that live up north during the, during the summer months, and then in the winter, they come down to their home in Florida. These are, these are what we call snowbirds in Florida. Many of you know what I'm talking about. And so in light of that, I want you to see now this video of Putin discussing this uh, missile that he has created and how there will be, or he says in the video that the video camera shows a direct attack on Florida. Notice what it says. Am I saying it's gonna happen at the same time as the DC invasion? I am not saying that. Only God knows when these things will transpire, but we must make preparation and we must warn others that they may prepare for what is coming upon this earth. Notice this short clip of this video regarding the missiles that show Florida being hit. So the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, says he isn't trying to ignite a new Cold War. But Putin is touting, uh, Putin is touting Russia's new invincible nuclear-powered missile that is capable of hitting anywhere in the world, according to him. Putin showed a video as proof simulating Russian missiles apparently raining down on Florida near the president's Mar-a-Lago estate. Our next. So there you just saw, brothers and sisters, 
In the video, it showed specifically Florida being hit. Now, why do I believe that Florida will be hit? I had a friend that had a dream, very close friend of mine, and he was on I-4, in the dream, he was driving on I-4, headed west towards Tampa, leaving Orlando. And as he's leaving Orlando, headed west, he saw a bomb go off in the distance. So in light of the dream that he had, I do believe that there will be attacks in Florida. I do believe that where specifically, only God knows. But I know he resides in the central, in central Florida. In the dream, he was, in, he was on I-4, driving towards Tampa, leaving Orlando, and saw a bomb go off in the distance. And so with that, brothers and sisters, I'm simply giving the warning as a watchman that those may understand that the sword is about to come on the land. And many in these situations will die. Even as sad as it is, brothers and sisters, the Bible says when we see pestilence and wars and rumors of wars, it says all these are the beginning of sorrows. It's only the beginning, brothers and sisters. And so prepare yourself to lose a loved one. Prepare yourself to lose a family member. If you know someone that resides in Florida or Washington DC, make sure you call them and give them the warning or send them the video via text or email. Let them know what is coming because you love them and you want them to understand to make preparation because their probation may close very soon. Also, some of you have seen the warning that we've given concerning the flooding that will be coming to the Tampa Bay, St. Petersburg area. Again, if you know someone in the Tampa Bay, St. Petersburg area, they need to move. That area will be flooded very soon. Now, in light of what we've been examining, we just saw two witnesses that show us that there will be an attack upon the White House and that the great houses will have an end. I'm going to give you now seven verses. I'm going to give you seven verses that all mention a fire being kindled in the palace. A, again, a fire being kindled in the palace. In the Bible, palace represents an administrative building or a government building. Palace is usually where the king would live when you examine the word of God, like the book of Esther or the book of Daniel, the king often dwelt in the palace. So when you study the word of God, the word palace is talking about the government capital or the government house or the, the main house that the president or the king resides in when you read the word palace in the Bible. I'm gonna give you seven verses that say that a fire will be kindled in the palace. Write these verses down. We won't look at all of them, but please write them down. Amos 1 and verse 4, Amos 1 and verse 7, Amos 1 and verse 10, Amos 1 and verse 12, Amos 1 and verse 14, Amos 2 and verse 2, Amos 2 and verse 5. I'll repeat that. It says, Amos, uh, the, here's the first five are in Amos chapter 1. So that's Amos 1, 4, 1, 7, 1, 10, 1, 12, and 1, 14. And then the next two are in Amos 2, that's Amos 2.2 2 and Amos 2.5. That's seven verses where God mentions in the book of Amos, which is a prophetic book, that there will be a fire kindled in the palace. Well, what is the leading nation? What is the leading palace of the world? It is none other than the White House. Now, I've given you nine witnesses from the Bible. In light of that, now, I'm going to confirm it with history. Turn with me in your Bible to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, notice what the Bible says. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, notice what it says. Ecclesiastes 1 and verse 9. The Bible says history always repeats itself. History always repeats itself. 
in history, many of us know nothing of the War of 1812, where there was an invasion in America and the White House was set ablaze and the Capitol building was set ablaze and other government buildings and Washington DC was on fire. It is known as the burning of Washington. And the Bible says, that which hath been is that which shall be. Notice what it says, Ecclesiastes 1 and verse 9. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. There's nothing new under the sun. That which hath been, that means past, is that which shall be future. History always repeats itself. That's why we must study history that we may know prophecy, especially biblical history that we may know the prophetic future. Now, in light of what we're talking about, notice what it says here concerning the burning of Washington. This is history. It says, the burning of Washington was a British invasion of Washington City, now Washington, D.C., the capital of the United States, during the War of 1812 and part of the Chesapeake Campaign on August 24th, 1814, after defeating the Americans at the Battle of Bladensburg, a British force led by Major General Robert Ross set fire to multiple government and military buildings, including the White House, then called the Presidential Mansion, the Capitol Building, as well as other facilities of the U.S. government. So notice that God is showing us that the White House was set ablaze and the Capitol building was set ablaze. Now, am I saying that the Capitol building is gonna be set ablaze? No, I am not stating that. Only God knows what will happen concerning the Capitol building and other buildings. But I am telling you, based on the word of God, that the White House will be attacked in the near future. This event is gonna be catastrophic and this event is going to be a, like a 9-11. This is like a second 9-11 that is coming to America. Just as 9-11 took away the liberties that we have loved and experienced in America, this attack upon the White House and Washington DC will even take more of your liberties and your freedoms away. And I believe it is in the very near future. It could be in November, it could be four years from now. Only God knows when it will happen, brothers and sisters, but we must be in preparation. And if you have loved ones there, please send them the video, send them the warning that they may make preparation. Now, in light of this, brothers and sisters, we must understand that history always repeats itself. And we have seen, based on history, as well as the word of God, a multitude of witnesses from the word and history we haven't seen this history repeated yet, which means it will come to pass in the near future. We will see a fire set ablaze in the White House, whether it be a missile, whether it be a bomb, whether it be some other means, only God knows how specifically it will happen, but there have been dreams that individuals have had concerning the White House being annihilated or being attacked and I wanna share two of those dreams with you this evening. Notice the first one that it says, now you know, based on the word of God, once you dream something twice, that means it is established. That's Genesis 41 and verse 32, and Job 33, verse 14 to 16. Once something is dreamt twice, that means it's established. God seals that instruction, showing its connection to the sealing message. Again, it's connection to the sealing message. Notice this dream that this young man had that he was in the White House just as Daniel was in the White House and he saw missiles coming down upon Washington, D.C. Trip forward. So in that dream, I saw, I saw a huge missile huge missile when i say huge it's really huge missile the dream i stood out seeing a missile coming down dropping 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 on the united states of america the white house 
Washington, Houston, Washington DC here. Yeah. A big missile, nuclear bomb, let me put it that way. Dropping. Dropping. Drop not going up. No. Dropping means he was already shot. He was already about to land on the verge of landing. So in the dream, the missile came and struck the White House. Made the White House be symbolized America as a whole or the US. But that's what I saw. In the dream I was in the dream. I was inside the White House, so to say. Yes, I was inside the White House literally. I saw myself there screaming, screaming at the top of my voice when I mean it. I said, No, no, no. In that dream I felt like I had a mantle, you understand? Like a powerful mantle was on me. And I was shouting at the top of my voice. You know the US is a country we all love. The country has blessed the world at large. So I was like, what happened? What's happening? A big missile. And the dream too, I perceived in my spirit that they were trying to, the American uh, force, US force, the military, they were trying to intercept the, the missile. But to no avail, they couldn't succeed. And they didn't succeed. So he struck the White House. And the White House it became like rubble, like sand. You know, like a nuclear bomb, something of that sort. I don't know much about the, the terminologies to use, but I'll try my own way. So he struck the house to bomb, to ashes, to rubbles, to like sun, like uh, liquid, something liquid, yeah, something. It was like melting away. And the dream, I was really shouting, really shouting that I could prevent it. But no, it didn't happen. So I believe that's a dream the Lord has given me. That's a prophetic dream. And somehow, I have been steadily watching how events are unfolding. So there you just saw, brothers and sisters, the young man was in the White House just as Daniel was in the White House. And I don't believe this is by chance. God is showing us just as he showed us in the word. Or again, my faith is upon the word, brothers and sisters. And God is simply confirming the dreams with what the word of God told us earlier. See, remember, just as in Judges chapter 7, Gideon was told by God what to do and what would happen. And in order to strengthen his faith, God then confirmed what he already told him with a dream. God confirmed what he already told him with a dream. And God is doing the same thing in these last days. God is giving his word, but many don't believe the word. And God, to strengthen our faith, is confirming the word with a dream. Doing the same thing. And this is what he's doing on every point of prophetic truth of advanced light for the last generation. True understanding of present truth. Now, so that's one dream. Remember, once something is dreamt twice, it's established. Here's another one of someone that had a dream where the White House was bulldozed. This is the second dream now. Notice this one. Okay, wow. this is a dream from one of our production, one of our producers, Pam. She said, uh, it was me, uh, Jen James, who's the producer for Marcus and Joni, mm -hmm. and some other people that I don't recall. We were in a room watching a flat screen TV during Refreshing Times Conference, waiting for one of the roll-ins to start playing. The screen starts to malfunction, and then all of a sudden a feed comes up, and it's the White House. You can see the Washington Mall, some other monuments, cars in a parking lot the feed was wavy not very strong but it was in color so we're looking at each other like what what is going on and immediately in my head I'm thinking okay here we go it's happening it's starting it's the last of the last days mm. Antichrist one world government etc then all of a sudden this big bulldozer bulldozes through the parking lot of cars and right through the White House, just like it was a deck of cards. Mm. So we start praying in the spirit immediately. And she mm -hmm. woke up. So there you just saw, brothers and sisters, that the White House was completely bulldozed in the dream that that individual had. You know, I am not happy about sharing any of this information. Um, I take no pleasure in death. I don't even take pleasure so much in sharing this prophecy. It is light from the Word of God, and it is a blessing to understand the Word of God. That is a blessing, but the message of warning and the message of death 
is not something that pleases my heart. And so in light of this, brothers and sisters, we must understand, even though many will say, well, we need to pray that these things don't happen, they're going to happen because the word of God cannot lie. And once something is dreamt twice, it is established. What you and I must do is brace ourselves in Jesus. We must abide in Christ. As these crises come, many will become homeless. Many will become captives of war. Many Americans or some Americans will be taken captive. Some of you have seen our videos concerning some Christians will be taken captive. And in these situations, God wants to respond in the spirit of meekness, in the spirit of Christ. Many will, will desire to arm themselves with weapons and with guns and to try to fight the uh, soldiers, the Russian and Chinese soldiers that invade. And I would discourage you from doing so. Why would I discourage you? Notice what the Bible says in Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13. We must learn of Jesus. And Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. We must learn of Jesus. And he says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. In order to learn of Jesus, we, be, we must become meek and lowly like Jesus. And Jesus was meek. In other words, when they came to arrest Jesus, Jesus allowed it to happen. He submitted himself, yet Peter pulled out his sword and chopped off the man's ear. And what did Jesus do? Jesus healed the ear. We cannot respond like those who are not under the influence of the Holy Spirit. We must respond as Christ would respond. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. This is not a fight for God's people to fight. God is taking matters into his own hands. And what I mean by that, if God allows for you to be taken captive, then that means there's someone that he's going to have you reach as you are taken overseas to a foreign land. There's someone that God is going to have you lead to Jesus. There's someone that you're going to be able to share present truth with. And this will be a part of the means of how God will lighten the earth with the glory of God, just as he did for Joseph. And just as he did for Daniel, as they were taken to foreign lands and God used them in the foreign land that they were in, these, these messages at a time of visions and dreams are significant to the time in which we live. And we must understand this as Christians. The Bible says all things work together for the good. This is not a time to be fearful and to be afraid, but this is a time to be bold for Jesus and to speak truth to power, to speak truth to those who know it not, to speak truth to those who are destitute of Jesus, to speak truth to those who are lost and need the balm in Gilead. We must take advantage of these opportunities to share the truth with those who know it not. This is what God has called us to do, brothers and sisters. Notice what he says in Revelation chapter 13 and verse 9 and 10. Please, I pray that you have a spiritual ear. Notice what it says, Revelation 13, verse 9 and 10. If any man have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit, I'm sorry, if any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity, and he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Daniel had faith in Medo-Persia, in Babylon. Joseph had faith in Egypt. They were taken to foreign lands, yet they were still obedient to the truth that they knew as they were in heathen lands and among those that knew not God. And you must do likewise if you are taken captive in the coming invasion. Now, in light of the situation, this war that is going to happen is going to break the economy. This war that is going to happen, it is going to break the economy. Notice what the Bible says in Psalms 48. Psalms 48 and verse 6 and 7. Psalms 48, verse 6 and 7, and there's a possibility of something transpiring that we must understand in this passage. Notice what it says, Psalms 48, verse 6 and verse 7. Notice what the Bible says, Psalms 48, verse 6 and 7. It says, fear took hold upon them there and pain as of a woman in travail. Thou breakest the ships of Tarshish with 
in east wind. We know that ships represent economics, business, trade. You can write down Revelation 18, 17. Also, you can write down also Proverbs 31 and verse 14. Ships represents business, trade, and economics. And then it said, it was broken by what? The east wind. We know that the east wind is talking about war that comes from the east. Wind is Jeremiah 51 and verse 1 to 3. Also, Jeremiah 4, verse 11 to 13. Wind represents war. And it said the east wind, that means war coming from the east. And where is Russia? And where is China? And where is Iran? Those three allies, which are the enemies of the United States, they are in the East. And this East wind will break the economy. Now, in light of this, this will bring forth birth pangs that will bring about much sorrow. Many will lose the money that they have in stocks, in, in, stocks, in mutual funds, in Roth IRAs, 401ks, retirement accounts, this is why I've been stating, now's the time to sell. Take your money out of those worldly things and pay off your debts and support the gospel ministry that the message for this hour may go forward. Now, in light of the east wind breaking the ships, remember when we examined the War of 1812 that the British that invaded the Washington DC, they also set ablaze other buildings? So in other words, there is the possibility of not just the White House being attacked, but if they were to attack, for example, the U.S. Mint or the U.S. Treasury or the Federal Reserve, or this will completely um, paralyze the U.S. economy because now they're no longer able to print money. If they were to drop a bomb, God forbid, they were to drop a bomb or a missile upon the U.S. Treasury, the U.S. Mint, or the Federal Reserve. This will handicap and paralyze the, the U.S. economy. And we see that the ships will be broken. So we will see what happens. Am I saying that they're definitely going to be hit? I'm not stating that. But we must understand that this war will negatively affect the economy. So here on the board, we have some things that we must understand. D.C. will be invaded. The White House will be attacked. These things are definite based on the word of God. We will expect missiles and bombs in the United States. And I expect there to be bombs in D.C. or missiles in D.C. as well as bombs or in the Florida region. Now, when we talk about these bombs, am I saying that they're all going to happen at the same time? No, I am not stating that. Only God knows the course of events and the chronology of how this will all play out. But remember, war can be one month or war can be three years. Only God knows how long this war will be. Now, in light of this situation, we also must understand Psalms 48 just told us that this will bring about a economic collapse, which means that this will be a transition to a digital economy to a computerized economy, to the digital dollar that they have already been discussing, the national digital currency that they have been developing using blockchain technology so that they can control your buying power, as it says in Revelation 13, 15, so that you will not be able to buy or sell. Now remember, there is a coin, they're, say, they're saying that there is a coin shortage at this hour. So being that that's, the, that's what they're stating, we must understand that they are going to phase out coins based upon the dream that Pastor Dana had. So my suggestion to you is to get rid of all your coins. Today, I had about a gallon bottle that I got rid of coins while I, at the local food line. And I used the machine and got about $200 worth of change. Uh, 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 they gave bills as I you know, in, put the change into the machine. So I would encourage you to go ahead and get rid of your change because very soon they're going to phase out change. And I believe very soon this is going to usher in the cashless society. And this, as this handicaps our economy, it would be prudent to understand if there are military troops 
on the grounds there is a high probability of martial law being implemented. There is a high probability of you not being able to go to the store to buy food. And if you cannot go to the store to buy food, that means that you need to have something in your cupboard. You need to have something in your shed. You need to have something uh, put away for a rainy day. Talking about food, which means I would suggest for you to have something at least four to eight weeks of food, at least four to eight weeks. Now, some are twisting my words and they are stating that I said I was totally against storage. No, if you go back and look at the videos, I said there's nothing wrong with storing for a few weeks, but to store for six months or to store for eight months, that's unnecessary, it's unnecessary. So in light of storage, there's nothing wrong with having something for four to eight weeks, brothers and sisters, nothing wrong with that. Because as we understand these prophetic things that God is showing us from his word, we must make preparation as you are able. Some of you may have to flee from your homes. Some of you may be taken captive. Some of you will understand that you may become, uh, you may become homeless or may have to move in with family. We are gonna see total chaos in our world, brothers and sisters, and in America just as we have been told by the GOP senator that we can expect war between the next six months and the Chinese expert, we shared that video with you, who also stated that there would be war or there would be turmoil is what his word says, there would be turmoil in the next six months. Am I saying these things to, for you to be fearful? No, I'm saying these things so that you can take time to pray, you can take time to study, so that you can put your house in order because many will be laid to rest in the course of these events. Many will die, bombs will go off. Um, there will be, you know, some will get COVID-19 COVID and die. There's gonna be all kinds of things that are transpiring, brothers and sisters. And as we understand these, our only hope is in Jesus. Not in how much food you can store, not in, you know, uh, you know, buying guns, not in anything earthly, not in a governor, not in a president, not in a mayor, not in, the, not in any politician, but in the word of God. Your only hope is in Jesus, brothers and sisters. Now's the time to come to an experience where you know him, where you have come into a saving relationship with Christ and you have now put your whole life in his hands. This is where God is bringing us to understand, brothers and sisters. We must learn to trust God with our whole lives. And for some of you that God has been trying to tell you to sell, you're going to realize you're going to lose that home that you have because you refused to sell and you held on to it when you should have sold it. Some of you are going to want to sell and you're not going to be able to sell your home because you waited too long because as the crisis looms, nobody's going to be buying homes due to the economic collapse. We must understand, brothers and sisters, you have to make preparation beforehand, not waiting for the crisis to do something. Now's the time to rent and live in the country and move away from the city into the country. In the city, you're going to have war. In the city, you're going to have famine. In the city, you're going to have pestilence like COVID-19. This is why we need to take our families away from the city and move to the country and rent. And God may lead some of you to go to other nations so that you can continue to spread the word as a result of these crises that come upon America. Now, as we examine the word of God, Notice what it says in Daniel chapter 5. Turn with me there. Daniel chapter 5. God is allowing these events to transpire because this is a way of God chastising. This is a way of God punishing America for her sins. What are her sins? Abortion. What are her sins? Same-sex marriage. What are her sins? Fornication. What are her sins? Strip clubs, bars, clubs, all the foolishness of society, the pornography, the, 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 the wickedness, the violence the, the, on the television screen, all these things, brothers and sisters, are sins that God is visiting America with judgment. And God often would chastise Israel with, by using other nations. You can write these three verses down. We won't turn there for time's sake. Jeremiah 51.1. Jeremiah 5.15 and Ezekiel 28.7, God would allow other nations to invade, to take the children of Israel captive 
because of their sins. I'll repeat those verses. Jeremiah 51.1, Jeremiah 5.15, and Ezekiel 28.7, God allows other nations to chastise a nation for their sins. Only righteousness will exalt a nation. Only righteousness. And what is righteousness? Righteousness is obedience to God's law. We're in Daniel 5 and verse 5. Notice what it says. Daniel 5, 5, the Bible says, In the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace, and the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Now notice, when God was issuing judgment upon Babylon, what did they see? They saw a man's hand writing on the wall. Well, let's, let's, let's look at 2020. We understand that God has given a dream to Pastor Dana, and in his dream, what did he see? He saw a hand that hit the calendar. Just as God had judgment and he showed his hand upon Babylon, God is showing us that judgment is coming to America. And this is why he used the finger of a man's hand in Daniel 5 and a finger of a man's hand in ref referring to America in Pastor Dana's dream. So again, if you have not seen Pastor Dana's dream, make sure you check out our video from a few weeks ago concerning that. These similarities are not by chance. This hand brought judgment upon Babylon. Likewise, God is bringing forth judgment upon America. This is what God is showing us as we understand correctly Daniel 5.5 5, in light of Pastor Dana's dream. Now, let us move on. Turn with me in your Bibles. Let us turn to Daniel chapter 6 now. Remember, when we studied Daniel 8, in our earlier scriptures today, in our earlier scriptures, we examined Daniel 8. And in Daniel 8, the two horns were broken as a result of war. Let me repeat. The two horns were broken as a result of war. And those two horns of America represent civil and religious liberty. The two horns of Revelation 13, 11 represents civil and religious liberty. And these two horns will be broken as a result of war between America, China, and Russia. So therefore, what that means, the civil and religious liberties are revealed in the U.S. Constitution. Those liberties are in the Constitution, which means we are going to see a change in the U.S. Constitution. And this will lead to a religious test. This will lead to the National Sunday Law. Notice here on the board, we have, after the economic collapse, the change of the U.S. Constitution. And that change of the Constitution will happen more than likely by a convention of states. And this will allow for them to completely change the Constitution. This is what we're going to see. And this will how they will bring in the Sunday Law. Notice what it says, Daniel 6. Am I saying it's all going to happen within 2020? I am not stating that. Only God knows the time frames for these events. I am not setting any date or time to any of these events. Please understand that. Daniel 6, verse 6 through 8. Notice what the Bible says. This is a convention of states is what we're seeing in Daniel 6. And verse 6, it says, Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. Verse 7, all the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes, the counselors and the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for 30 days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. So notice all the elected officials, the governors, the presidents, the rulers, the captains, they all came together to bring about a religious law. Well, what is this religious law? It is the mark of the beast. And what is the, who is the beast? The beast is Roman Catholicism. What is the mark of her authority? Sunday observance. Sunday will be enforced 
as the law of the land in America, and this will bring forth persecution upon commandment keepers. And once they institute this law, they will stay. It cannot be changed. Notice what it says in verse 8. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Once they bring about a change to the Constitution, they will say these laws can't be changed. This religious law cannot be changed. This is what they're going to institute, and they're going to bring this forth as a result of changing the Constitution. And that is what this war will do. This war of China and Russia and America will bring forth war against God's commandment people. Notice what he says, Revelation 12. Revelation 12 and verse 17, notice the war of the Russia, China, and America, this war will bring forth war against the true Christians, against those who are living by every word of God. Notice what he says. Revelation 12 and verse 17, the Bible says, And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So the dragon, who represents Satan, always uses the government to bring persecution to God's people. In the days of Egypt, Satan used Pharaoh to try and kill all the baby boys when Moses was about to be born. In the days of Jesus, King Herod instituted a law to kill all the baby boys to try to destroy Jesus. In the days of Daniel, Medo-Persia enforced a law and he was thrown into the lion's den. In the days of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, he instituted a law that everyone had to bow down to the image and those who did not bow down were thrown into the lion's den. All these examples are pointing forward to the mark of the beast, which is the issue of worship. It's the issue of worship. Notice what it says, Revelation 14. And verse 9, Revelation 14 and verse 9, notice what the Bible says. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. This issue of the forehead is where you make your decisions, and the hand represents work. If you make a firm decision in your mind, you're going to carry it out in your life. You're going to carry it out in your works. And this is what God is showing us. You can read Daniel, I'm sorry, you can read Deuteronomy 6, 1 through 8, and Deuteronomy 11, 13, and 18, I believe. 13 and 18, those verses. And it shows you the connection between the forehead and the hand and the commandments of God. We must obey God's seventh day Sabbath which is Saturday, the seventh day of the week, the fourth commandment, the only commandment where God says, remember, why? Because he knew that man would change his law, that the Catholic Church says that the mark of her authority is Sunday, and we must follow God and not man. This is where this war is leading to, brothers and sisters. This is what God is showing us. This is why I have on the board the national Sunday law will separate those who are walking by faith and those who are walking according to tradition, who are walking according to man's laws and not God's laws. And we cannot follow tradition. We must follow the word of God. That is what faith is. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And as we read Revelation 12 and verse 17, it says the dragon is angry with those that keep the commandments of God. Are you keeping the commandments? And those who have the testimony of Jesus. Well, what is the testimony of Jesus? Revelation 19:10, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. It is the gift of prophesying. And as you see these events come to pass, you will know where the truth that God is sending to his people to prepare them for the second coming of Jesus. He's coming soon. Are you getting ready? Are you surrendering your heart to every revealed will of God? Or are you hardening your heart to what God is telling you to let go in your life? 
Have you overcome sin? Have you overcome self? Have you died to the flesh? Have you died to the pride of life, the lust of the eyes, and the lust of the flesh? Have you died to these things is the question, brothers and sisters, because Jesus is coming soon and death is knocking upon the door and many will be laid to rest. Now's the time to surrender your life to Jesus. Now's the time if you have not chosen Christ as your Lord and Savior, now's the time to do it. But in order to choose Jesus, you must give up the world. You must give up the movies. You must give up the worldly music. You must give up the love of fashion. You must give up the love of self and the love of the pleasures of this world. You must give up the lust. You must give up all the worldly things that you may receive the pearl of great price. As I close, I know many of you still don't believe what I've shared with you from the word of God. And for those of you that still don't believe, God still loves you and I still love you. And what God is doing now, he's going to show you how even as we've been told about 9-11 before it happened in multitude of ways, whether it was Simpsons or other things, even as the COVID-19 was planned, as we have recognized that Dr. Fauci stated that in 2017 that there would be a surprise pandemic. How did he know that? Even as we saw the cartoon, the comic that was released in 2017 concerning the co coronavirus, all these things were planned, brothers and sisters. Event 201, all these things showed us this was planned. This was planned. In other words, they tell you these things before they happen. Let me show you what I mean. Look at this here. It says, White House down. I don't encourage you to watch movies, but here's a movie letting you know that the White House was attacked. White House down. There's another one. And remember, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, I'm going to show you three movies that show this is going to happen. Notice another one. Olympus has fallen. What was this movie about? It was about an attack on the White House, is what it says. You can read that. Just pause the video and you can read it. It was about an attack on the White House. What else? Another movie about an invasion of a communist country. Here, Red Dawn, this is a movie about an invasion in America of, with, by a communist country. Just as we have been showing in prophecy, God has revealed these things that are about to come to pass. And we must understand, brothers and sisters, even when you look at the COVID-19 and the coronavirus crisis, the movies like Contagion, the movies like Outbreak, and even some of the other movies, they have been foreshadowing and showing you what was coming. They told you before it happened. A lot of these events, sad to say, brothers and sisters, are planned. They're planned. But there is a day where we all will have to answer to God for our actions. And we are now living in the investigative judgment. How will you stand before God as he asks you about your life? How will you stand? Have you confessed? and forsaken your sins? Have you let go of sin? Because the Bible says his name shall be called Jesus and he shall save his people from their sins. In other words, he gives you victory over sin. He helps you to overcome sin. And how does that happen? By faith. You must choose to crucify the flesh. You must choose to surrender your life to Jesus because it says in Galatians 2, in verse 20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Jesus loves you. Will you surrender before it's too late? Oh, brothers and sisters, let us yield our hearts and give our lives to Christ that he may use us, that we may lighten the earth with his glory. Will you do that today? Will you choose Christ today? Let us pray. Loving Father, we thank you for your word and we thank you for the truth. Please be with your people. Give them the faith that they may stand upon your word and as they see these events come to pass that they will know that your word cannot lie and it will not lie. Cleanse us, we ask of all unrighteousness and may your will be done on earth in our lives as it is in heaven please over give us victory over sin 
and pour out your spirit upon us that we may be sealed in the present truth. I thank you for answering this prayer. In Jesus' name, we ask these blessings. Amen.